What's up, people? Supreme Decisions here. And yes, I'm out here near this loud ass expressway. But tonight, I actually wanted to drive home a point. Because there was a video I did with the young Matt Damon. And we spoke about asset forfeiture. Now, one of the things that I talked about was the idea for asset forfeiture and what the context is supposed to be. Because anytime the police sees your assets, it's supposed to be in connection to a crime. And although Ren stated that a traffic infraction is okay for a traffic stop it never refers to a traffic stop as a crime unless there's a traffic accident so when you're having one of those nights where you're out here and you're up against the road boom oh get this car go by and you have the police seizing your assets without a proper warrant without probable cause you have an opportunity for recourse i'm going to give you this video where there was a news i guess you would call it a news uh a short news story regarding a supreme court decision on asset forfeiture and how it has been used as a weapon not only for cash generations for a lot of the cities even here in Texas but across the country and how it is illegal but it's up to you to fight and make sure that it's done in its proper text and it's proper in the manner that there is actually a crime that's being committed. So, go watch this video and I'll be back. A unanimous decision today from the U.S. Supreme Court limits the ability of states to seize private property and impose excessive fines. The decision came from Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Who was the case began when an Indiana man pleaded guilty to selling $225 of heroin the police later claimed his Land Rover had been used to transport drugs and seize the $42,000 car, something a lower court judge said was disproportionate to the gravity of his offense. Right. The justices were asked whether the ban against excessive fines in the Eighth Amendment applies to the states. Does it protect us from state action that is excessive? in fines or forfeiture, that that uh, excessive fines ban does protect us against state action. Well, there have been a number of complaints or allegations by citizens and also news reports that some police departments have used forfeiture and fines in an abusive way or in a way that uh, sometimes uh, funds uh, certain activities that they want to do without any real connection to a crime. And so what the court did today is going to do two things, basically. It's going to make police departments probably more cautious in how they use uh, fines and forfeitures. And it also gives all of us a basis to challenge those forfeitures or fines if we think they are excessive. And Justice Ginsburg also pointed out in her opinion that excessive fines and forfeitures can also undermine our other rights. She noted in particular that if they're used 
in, in the wrong way. They can chill speech, for example, and they can be used as retaliation. And there have been allegations that they have been used in that way. Remember that when the Bill of Rights was ratified, it was to protect us against federal action. And the court, over a period of years, through what it calls incorporation, has applied the Bill of Rights to the states through our 14th Amendment due process clause. Uh, I hope everyone was paying attention. You actually heard from someone other than myself say, the Supreme Court ruled that asset forfeiture, if it's not dealing with a crime, is illegal. But wait, there's more. I got one more, one more clip for you to look at. Because again, look, when I'm talking, it's not just for my health, not just to be heard. But I want you to pay attention. Let's roll this next clip. Forfeiture has to do with criminal activity. You cannot do a, you can't file a forfeiture action unless you're alleging that the money that was seized was part of a criminal activity. That's what a forfeiture action is. So there you have it. Not just me, two separate sources that tell you asset forfeiture, if it's not dealing with a crime, is illegal. And therefore, you have an opportunity to fight back. Why? Because it violates not only your civil rights, it violates their oath. It violates everything that the law is supposed to stand for. So, you got the contact information in somewhere on here. You got it in the description. Holla at your boy if you want to understand how to fight back properly against illegal asset forfeiture. Supreme, I'm out.